it's Miss Couch, your teaching artist with Kids Smart, to here with you today to look at some more illustrations, to talk about what we see, to connect them to our story, to make some predictions, and to see what we got right after we read together. We're continuing with the same book, Raggedy Ann Stories by Johnny Gruel, and our first picture right here also has the title of today's story, Raggedy Ann and the Kite. Now we know from last week who Raggedy Ann is. She is a doll. We learned a lot about her in the introduction. And there's some other things going on in this picture we can talk about. The first thing I notice, well, the title says, Raggedy Ann and the Kite. So the other big object here must be the kite. It is a smiling face drawn on paper, I think. It is yellow. It is, it is a funny face because it is a lot like Raggedy Ann's face. I see that smiling curved line for the mouth. I see round circles for eyes with an X in the middle, just like the buttons that are sewn on Raggedy Ann's face. Her eyebrows are simple lines and so are the kites. Raggedy Ann's nose is red, but her nose, well in this picture you can't really tell. It looks long and skinny. And on the kite, it's, um, it's more sideways, a rounder, fatter nose, maybe. And then I notice some other things in this picture. What color is this background? What color is the sky? Yes, it's black. It's so dark. And why do you think... Miss Couch said, sky. Well, kites fly in the sky, but there's something else in this picture. Something else I can see that is little yellow stars, and I know stars go in the sky. So those are all the things that I know about the first picture. Let's look at the second picture. Oh my goodness, here we see Raggedy Ann. Here we see Raggedy Ann and there is something tied around her middle, tied to her waist. What could that be? I see yellow and red and blue and green, many, many colors, but what, what is that? And then up at the top, Could that be the kite? It looked yellow in the last picture and now it looks green. Maybe this is the back side of the kite. What do you think? And I also see a skinny little line from the kite going off the side of the paper. What is that? Then I look below Raggedy Ann, and this is interesting. Down below Raggedy Ann, I can see some green things that look like trees. I see, oh, a little tiny houses. Um, yellow on the ground. Maybe that is um, corn growing in the field. Maybe. And what color is the sky? Well, I see a lot of this kind of creamy yellow color, but when I look in the tip top of the picture, I see blue, blue sky with a big puffy cloud. And the cloud is a little bit golden. Let's see what's in our next picture. Oh my goodness, this is not Raggedy Ann at all. One, two, three children. I guess they're children. What else could they be? 
Well, they could be dolls, but I do believe the girl in the front is Marcella. I am looking at her hair and I am remembering the picture from last week that showed her curly, curly hair. And I think this must be Marcella. And I'm looking at her fingers and they look realistic. They look like a real little girl. But behind her, the girl in the purple and the boy in the white hat, I am not sure. I am not sure if they are dolls or people. The girl in the purple hat has a very realistic face, but the boy in the white hat is less realistic. Look at his hand. How many fingers does he have? One, two, three, four, and a thumb. Well, that is right, but most of us do not hold our hands straight out like that. So maybe, maybe that is a doll. Very interesting. And what is in the background of this picture? I just see some colors, kind of some blue and green, some yellow. So maybe it is supposed to make us think of um, being outside on a, a nice day when the, when the grass is green and the sky is blue and there's big puffy clouds. Uh, maybe that's what it's supposed to make us think of. I think we will have to read the story to find out a little bit more about this. Something very interesting to me in this picture are these hats. When you go outside to play, do you wear a hat? Well, sometimes I do wear a hat when I go outside. Sometimes when I know I'm going to be outside all day and I know that it's going to be very sunny, and I don't want to get a sunburn on my nose. I will wear a hat with a floppy brim to protect my nose. Now this purple hat looks like it might protect you from the sun, but Marcella's hat does not have a floppy brim. It does not have anything that will protect her from the sun, really. It's like a bonnet, but fancy with fruit or flowers and leaves. I don't know about her hat. It seems like it is just for pretty and not for practical. Let's look at the next picture. Oh no, here is Raggedy Ann. And what is Raggedy Ann doing? What is she doing? Well, she doesn't have anything tied around her anymore. Remember, two pictures ago, she was tied to the kite. And in this picture, there's nothing attached to her. So what is she doing? Could she be falling, falling, falling down out of the sky? Let's look at the next picture. Well, here is Raggedy Ann, and in this picture she is not falling out of the sky. She is in a tree. Well, that looks very nice. The tree looks like a good place to land. There are leaves on the tree, so it's not winter time. And actually, there's someone else in this picture with Raggedy Ann. I see two birds. Can you see the birds? What are these birds doing? They are pulling Raggedy Ann's hair. Do you see that? Last week we learned that Raggedy Ann's hair was made of yarn. And these birds are pulling on her yarn hair. What are they doing that for? Why would a bird want yarn? Hmm. I see another interesting thing about this picture. In the last picture, the sky was yellow, like golden fluffy clouds full of sunshine. But in this picture, the sky is not yellow anymore. 
it's a little bit orange maybe and I see up in the top of the picture even a little bit of the sky is red orangey red what does that tell us about the time of day I think when the Sun turns red it is going down so here we have a tree with green leaves so it is spring or summer two birds that are pulling her hair and the sky turning orange because it must be the end of the day sunset all right one more picture oh here we have Marcella we have Marcella with Raggedy Ann again so what does that mean I think it means that Raggedy Ann got out of that tree and away from those birds. How do you think that happened? How could Raggedy Ann get out of the tree and back to Marcella? Well, a, a big wind could knock her out of the tree. Uh, the birds, the birds could carry Raggedy Ann if they if her hair would not fall out, they could carry her by her hair and take her back to her house. Raggedy Ann could go back to Marcella with the birds. Mm, what is another way that Raggedy Ann could go back to Marcella? Well, maybe if she fell out of the tree, someone that knew Marcella found her under the tree. Or even Marcella could find her under the tree. I am looking in the picture and I see one other interesting thing. And that is a butterfly. A butterfly. How beautiful. So that tree is not in the picture anymore, but instead we have a butterfly. Makes me think of a park or a meadow or a very big backyard. I don't know about Marcella's backyard. And there is one other thing in this picture that I want to point out to you, and that is in the very bottom on the left side, the name Johnny Gruel. Johnny Gruel, of course, wrote the stories and illustrated them. So that is the artist's signature and also the author's signature there on the bottom of the picture, Johnny Gruel. All right, let's go back to Raggedy Ann and the Kite, and we can read it together. Raggedy Ann and the Kite. Raggedy Ann watched with interest the preparations. A number of sticks were being fastened together with strings and covered with light cloth. Raggedy Ann heard some of the boys talk of the kite so Raggedy Ann knew this must be a kite. When a tail had been fastened to the kite and a large ball of heavy twine tied to the front, one of the boys held the kite up in the air and another boy walked off, unwinding the ball of twine. There was a nice breeze blowing, so the boy with the twine called, Let her go! and started running. Marcella held Raggedy up so that she could watch the kite sail through the air. How nicely it climbed! But suddenly the kite acted strangely, and as all the children shouted advice to the boy with the ball of twine, the kite began darting this way and that, and finally making four or five loop-the-loops, it crashed to the ground. It needs more tail on it, one boy shouted. Then the children asked each other why they, where they might get more rags to fasten to the tail of the kite. Let's tie Raggedy Ann to the tail, suggested Marcella. I know she would enjoy a trip way up in the sky. And the boys all shouted with delight at this new suggestion. So Raggedy Ann was tied to the tail of the kite. This time the kite rose straight in the air and remained steady. The boy with the ball of twine unwound it until the kite and Raggedy Ann were way, way up and far away. 
How Raggedy Ann enjoyed being up there. She could see for miles and miles. And how tiny the children looked. Suddenly, a great puff of wind came and carried Raggedy Ann streaming way out behind the kite. She could hear the wind singing on the twine as the strain increased. Suddenly, Raggedy Ann felt something rip. It was the rag to which she was tied. As each puff of wind caught her, the rip widened. When Marcella watched Raggedy Ann rise high above the field, she wondered how much Raggedy Ann enjoyed it and wished that she too might have gone along. But after the kite had been up in the air for five or ten minutes, Marcella grew restless. Kites were rather tiresome. There was more fun in tea parties out under the apple tree. Will you please pull down the kite now? She asked the boy with the twine. I want Raggedy Ann. Let her ride up there, the boy replied. We'll bring her home when we pull down the kite. We're going to get another ball of twine and let her go higher. Marcella did not like to leave Raggedy Ann with the boys, so she sat down upon the ground to wait until they pulled down the kite. But while Marcella watched Raggedy Ann a dot in the sky, she could not see the wind ripping the rag to which Raggedy was tied. Suddenly, the rag parted, and Raggedy Ann went sailing away as the wind caught her in her skirts. Marcella jumped up from the ground, too surprised to say anything. The kite, released from the weight of Raggedy Ann, began darting and swooping to the ground. We'll get her for you, some of the boys said when they saw Marcella's troubled face, and they started running in the direction Raggedy Ann had fallen. Marcella and the other girls ran with them. They ran and they ran and they ran, and at last they found the kite upon the ground with one of the sticks broken. But they could not find Raggedy Ann anywhere. She must have fallen almost in your yard, a boy said to Marcella, for the kite was directly over here when the doll fell. Marcella was heartbroken. She went into the house and lay on the bed. Mama went out with the children and tried to find Raggedy Ann, but Raggedy Ann was nowhere to be seen. When Daddy came home in the evening, he tried to find Raggedy, but met with no success. Marcella had hardly eaten any dinner, nor could she be comforted by Mama or Daddy. The other dolls in the nursery lay forgotten and were not put to bed that night for Marcella lay and sobbed and tossed about her bed. Finally, she said a little prayer for Raggedy Ann and went to sleep. And as she slept, Marcella dreamed that the fairies came and took Raggedy Ann with them to Fairyland for a visit and then sent Raggedy home to her. She awakened with a cry. Of course, Mama came to her bed right away and said that Daddy would offer a reward in the morning for the return of Raggedy. It was all my fault, Mama, Marcella said. I should not have offered the boys dear old Raggedy Ann to tie on the tail of the kite, but I just know the fairies will send her back. Mama took her in her arms and soothed her with cheering words, although she felt indeed that Raggedy Ann was truly lost. And would never be found again. Now, where do you suppose Raggedy Ann was all this time? When Raggedy Ann dropped from the kite, the wind caught in her skirts and carried her along until she fell in the fork of the large elm tree directly over Marcella's house. When Raggedy Ann fell with a thud, Face up in the fork of the tree, two robins who had a nest nearby flew, chattering away. Presently the robins returned and quarreled at Raggedy Ann for laying so close to their nest. But Raggedy Ann only smiled at them and did not move. When the robins quieted down and quit their quarreling, one of them hopped up closer to Raggedy Ann in order to investigate. It was Mama Robin. She called to Daddy Robin and told him to come. 
See the nice yarn? We could use it to line the nest with, she said. So the robins hopped closer to Raggedy Ann and asked if they might have some of her yarn hair to line their nest. Raggedy Ann smiled at them. So the two robins pulled and tugged at Raggedy Ann's yarn hair until they had enough to line their nest, nice and soft. Evening came and the robins sang their goodnight songs and Raggedy Ann watched the stars come out, twinkle all night and disappear in the morning light. In the morning, the robins again pulled yarn from Raggedy Ann's head and loosened her so she could peep over the side of the limb. And when the sun came up, Raggedy Ann saw she was in the trees of her own yard. Now, before she could eat any breakfast, Marcella started out to find Raggedy Ann. And it was Marcella herself who found her. And this is how she did it. Mama Robin had seen Marcella with Raggedy Ann out in the yard many times. So she began calling, Cheery, Cheery. And Daddy Robin started calling, Cheery, Cheery, Chirrup, Chirrup. Cheerily, Cheerily, Cheery, Cheery. And Marcella looked up into the tree above the house to see the robins, discovered Raggedy Ann, peeping over the limb at her. Oh, how her heart beat with happiness. Here's Raggedy Ann, she shouted. And Mama and Daddy came out and saw Raggedy smiling at them. And Daddy got the clothes prop and climbed out of the attic window and poked Raggedy Ann out of the tree and she fell right into Marcella's arms where she was hugged in a tight embrace. You will never go up on a kite again, Raggedy Ann, said Marcella, for I felt so lost without you. I will never let you leave me again. So Raggedy Ann went into the house and had breakfast with her little mistress and Mama and Daddy smiled at each other when they peeped through the door into the breakfast room. For Raggedy Ann's smile was wide and very yellow. Marcella, her heart full of happiness, was feeding Raggedy Ann part of her egg. Oh my goodness. Well, let's look at our pictures again and talk about what we learned in the story. Now here we have Raggedy Ann flying and we learned about this line that goes from the front of the kite off the side of the page. And we learned about what Raggedy Ann is tied to the kite. So the rags are called the tail, but the skinny little line was a ball of twine Twine is like heavy string. So the tail is different than the twine. The twine is what the boy is holding on to, and the tail is what Raggedy Ann is tied to. Why do you think a kite needs a tail? What happened when the Raggedy Ann was not attached to the tail? And what happened when Raggedy Ann fell off the kite. In the story, it told us the kite did something. It darted, it made loop-de-loops, and in the end, it crashed. So that tail must be important. When Raggedy Ann was attached, it said the kite flew steady, and it said the boy could let the twine out till the whole ball was out and he said he was going to get more and fly her even higher. Now that is something you can look up and find some videos about how a kite works, why a tail is important. You could maybe try an experiment at home. There are instructions on YouTube on how to make a kite. And at the beginning of the story, it told us this kite was made of some pieces of wood and some fabric. You can probably make this with paper. You could even order a kite online or a kite kit to make your own. 
It might even be an interesting science project. You might do some experiments to find out how much tail is the right amount of tail to make a kite soar like that. Let's see, our second picture. Well, it did not say that Marcella had any of her dolls with her, so I guess these are other children. And maybe they're all girls. In the story, it talked about the boys flying the kite, but Marcella watching the kite with other children. So I guess they're real people and not dolls. What do you think? Real people? Yes or no? Let's see. The next picture is Raggedy Ann falling and falling and falling. We read about that. We read about the wind catching in her skirts and helping her to drop softly and to float in the air and to move through the air. And where did she land? In the tree. And what did we learn here? These birds are called robins. And they did want some of her nice yarn hair. What did they want it for? That's right, to put in their nest, to make their nest nice and soft. And they even asked Raggedy Ann if it was okay to take some. Raggedy Ann did not talk to the birds, but she was smiling, so they thought that was permission, and they took her yarn hair. Then, of course, we know that Raggedy Ann spent the night outside. So let's go back to this first picture where the sky is dark, and there are what? Stars in the sky. Raggedy Ann saw all of those twinkling stars in the sky. Now this picture is a little tricky, isn't it? Because by the time Raggedy Ann saw the stars in the sky, the kite had fallen and been broken and was nowhere near her. But the artist chose to put all of these things in the picture together. Well, I can understand why the author chose Raggedy Ann and why the author th chose the kite because the name of the story is Raggedy Ann and the Kite. But the story is not Raggedy Ann and the Kite and the Stars. Why do you think the artist decided to put the stars in this picture? I have an idea about this. I think it is because the author wanted us to know how brave Raggedy Ann was, that she stayed out all night and saw the stars that she was not afraid in the tree even though she was not in the house with Marcella she was with the robins and she felt safe in the tree and she felt brave and calm and I think the artist Johnny Gruel who's also the author wanted to tell us something about Raggedy Ann and who she is in this illustration she is she was brave to go up on the kite and she was brave to spend the night outside and she was interested in what she might see and excited for something new like the stars in the sky if you have never been out late at night way out in the country away from the city lights Maybe you have never seen these stark, sparkling, twinkling starlights. It is very difficult to see them here in New Orleans. We have a lot of clouds here. We have a lot of street lights here. We just have a lot of light all night long so that our sky does not usually get to be this dark black color and our stars are not twinkling so brightly. And then, of course, we have the very last picture, which is Marcella back with Raggedy Ann. This is when she found her and her daddy knocked her out of the tree and Marcella caught her. So that's a nice 
we would call it an action photo now if we took the picture with the camera of Raggedy falling right into Marcella's arms, which is so sweet. But you know what I wish? I wish Johnny Gruel had given us a picture of Marcella trying to feed Raggedy Ann an egg. Because I know Raggedy Ann's mouth does not really open, and she must have been a terrible mess with all of that egg on her face. All right, let's go back to our story. Here we have the table of contents. Up closer to the top. Look at that. So now we have read the introduction and Raggedy Ann and the kite. And next, what will we read next? Well, of course, you can read any of these stories that you want. But I will be back next week with another Raggedy Ann story. And I will have a link for you to follow to learn more about Johnny Gruel, the author and artist. Until then, have a great week.